Welcome back, everybody. This is the Murder Journal. I'm Tommy. I'm Mel. And today's a big case. Oh, that, yeah. And we're going live with this trial today. Uh, what trial are we going over? This is actually a hearing. This is a hearing for Brian Koberger. Um, let's do this before I forget. <laughs> All right. Now we can do it. Are we ready, Freddie? All right, let's go. We're here for a uh, motion and a potential witness, I believe, uh, relating to motions to compel discovery, fourth and fifth. That's all I know. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Taylor. Your Honor, the court is correct. We are here to begin the motions to compel. We have testimony today from Detective Mallory. As the court will recall, he's unavailable on the 30th and 31st, which are the days when we will have the full scope of our motions to compel. So it may feel a little choppy, but we would like to hear from Detective Mallory today and would call him when it's appropriate. Okay, thank you. Anything preliminary, Mr. Thompson and Ms. Jennings? No. Okay, great. Um, Detective Mowry, come on up. You space to the third, raise your hand, right hand. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you give in this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under penalty of perjury? All right. Thank you, sir. Go ahead and have a seat there. Once you're seated, please state your name and spell your last. I think the judge is in the courtroom. The way the bench is seated. My name is Florence Lowry, M O W E R Y. All right. Thank you, sir. Ms. Taylor. Thank you. Will you tell us how you're employed? I'm employed with the Moscow Police Department. What is your role there? I am a detective. How long have you worked for Moscow Police Department? I've worked for the Moscow for over five years. Have you been a detective that entire time? I have. And prior to that, did you have law enforcement experience? I do. How many years total? Yeah, Detective Mowry, um, you did you take part in the investigation into the homicides on King Road? Yes. And what was your role? A lot of different things. Uh, how to answer that? Well, I can I can ask you about a couple of roles, maybe. Sure. Um, do you do any work? with cell phones and cell towers. I have taken training for cell phone analysis. Was that one of the roles that you played in this investigation? All right. And the other oh, area pause it real quick. To about is the collection of video hey, evidence. Something else about this witness that just hit me is uh, he got credited. He got an award from like the FBI on on his background with cell phones and stuff like this. Uh, you're muted. You're muted. He got certified through the FBI? Uh, no. Uh, he did or something. Or they gave him a commendation. Yeah, they gave him a commendation. Oh, okay. Not because of this, because of other things he's done in the past. So his, like... He's a SME. Yeah, a his subject expertise matter expert. is really honed in. I just wanted to clear, let everybody Perfect. know. Go ahead. Okay. There's surveillance evidence from around the community. What was your role in that? So uh, we gathered a lot of data, a lot of USBs, hard drives that came in time. I had one point to all of that was given to me so that I could copy it over to a server so that we have it stored and backed up. Did you inventory it at that time as you got it in, I guess? No, I have to say inventory. They were, I used the evidence technician to help me uh, book them individually at the time. So the desk had the name of it on it. I would label the folder of what it was and that came from it. Did you have Did that just any happen? role in verifying the content of well, the surveillance? The mic isn't picking them up. Do you hear oh, how they, they echo is? Forward? Yeah, they no, okay. they moved it. Uh That's what I maybe asked. pick them up. But right now I'm not seeing the mic even in the picture, which means the mic's not working. Okay. That's why there's an echo. 
I'm going to have a few questions about that, but I want to talk a little bit more about your role with cell phones and cell towers. So let's start there, okay? What training do you have for that role? So some time ago, I went through uh, what they say PATC training, which is cellular analysis, and I've also taken classes with CAS boys. The cellular cellular analysis, is that particular to the device itself, the cell phone device? No. That is particular to towers? To the towers and the dividers themselves. When did you take that training? Boy, um, the cast, I believe, was in 2019, and then I also did it again last year. And the, the cast that you took in 2019, that was the Endicac, is that right? That was the Endicac, right. And the cast that you took last year was October of 2023, is that correct? Yes. And that was the actual cast training? They were both done by actual cast members. I'm not sure if one was sponsored by the other, but they were both uh, performed by FBI cast members. Hmm. And Your Honor, if I can approach. Yes, thank you. Sorry, I got to shuffle some papers. I'm taking my notes. Detective Mallory, I'm putting in front of you what's labeled as Defendant's Exhibit O, and those are two certificates. For I was going to say, probably a certificates. Correct? Yes. All right. So the one that's from 2019, what did that cover? That covered the use of the cast goods software. And what did the one in 2023 cover? The same. You are at new for admission of defendants. Oh, the objection? No objection. Okay. Those are exe exhibit, exhibit. Oh, no, no objection. Thank you. The Detective Mowry, how many total hours do those certificates represent of CAS training? I apologize. I didn't look. It was a week long. So it was actually a couple of days each time, two days a piece of paper. Did you just? But they... Did I just read out saying pizza dough so on the words? 2019 shows 24 hours. I don't know. 2023 says 16 hours. Thank you, detective. Thank you. Detective, you've written some reports in this case, is that correct? Yes. I want to talk about two particular reports right now. Um, one is from May the 5th of 2023. Do you recall that report or should I bring a copy of that to you? Did you pull that up? I can definitely do that. You can show it to us, He's reviewing his report to authenticate it. Mm -hmm. Well, that and also not perjure himself. Think about it. You, when you write a report up and it's been so long, you probably need to skim over yeah, it before you say it. Yeah, I'm just checking for right so now. The pr procedurally, about. he's just authenticating. Yes. Detective Mallory, does that appear to be your report from May 5th of 2023? Yes. And your order would move for admission of defendants P. That's P. P, like Paul. All right. Any objection? Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah. Exhibit P is admitted. No objection. Thank you, Your Honor. Detective Mowry, I do not have a police report for the other one that I want to talk about today. Um, it's one that I received by an email today that was written just within the last few days by you, probably. Do you know what report I'm talking about? Yes. Okay. Now, um, what I want to understand is we're talking about documents or records or logs that they can be created by a cast biz program. The report that you wrote that I received today 
when did you learn about those documents that exist according to that report? The research logs that I found were from yesterday. Why did you come to find them yesterday? Uh, to prepare for this hearing. Okay. And those are things that existed for quite some time, is that correct? Uh, they did. And when you wrote about your work with CAS Biz in May of 2023, did you document those items? No. Okay. Tell me what you found when you were preparing for the motion to compel today. I found on the session logs that were sent to me from the FBI. All right. And in those session logs, how many files were there? Uh, I don't remember. I think there were six or seven different items inside. Did you look at the cast biz 48 hour file? I don't remember if I did. It was family perception. Did you look at it yesterday in preparation for this hearing? I attempted to. All right. And how about the cast biz full log? I attempted to yesterday. I noticed in your report that there were several items that you listed. Were those from these cast biz logs that you attempted to look at yesterday? I'm sorry, I'm going to have to, you need to speak up a little bit. Or just telling me to pick up a little bit. There were some files that were in the session logs through other files that were not. Well, let's start with the 48 hour. What was contained in there? There's over 48 hours that was the AT&T records, the original records, and there's a 48 hour session log. Let's go with the session log. What was in there? Yeah, it appeared to be the AT&T records that possibly were inputted, uh, as well as some JSON files that were probably produced by CASPIS. JSON files were produced by CASPIS. Is that right? I would assume that. I didn't create those files. What date were they created? I believe one was in December. The other was in April. December of what year? 20. And April of what year? 23. Could you tell who created those? I could not. How did you get those? I was provided those via email. By who? I made balance of the FBI. What did you do with those? Even as soon as I realized they were in my possession, I had contacted the prosecutor and gave them it. And that would be just yesterday, is that correct? Yes. What did you do with them prior to that time? They were sent to me. I put them in a folder and I didn't do anything else with them. That's why I forgot them. Okay. And that was the 48-hour file? The 48-hour session log, yes. How about the full file? What was contained in there? Similar to right, items to the 48. What is the full file? I believe that was the uh, second the AT&T return that we got via warrant. Um, I was able to open it to verify it. That brings up a question for clarification. When you say second warrant return, are you talking about something that relates to Brian Koberger? Yes, there was two warrants that were originally written, one that covered a 48-hour period for the cell phone uh, number, and those one that was later done for a longer period of time. And those are, are what you're referring to as the warrants one and warrant two? Correct. Okay. 48 and one for both longer period. In the report that I just received today, there was reference to a loped bar file. What's that? It's a file that I received from Agent Bounds. When did you receive that? I want to say the modification for the email. I, I honestly don't remember. Unfortunately, it was yesterday and I didn't throw this stuff together. So. Okay. So that was one that you just found yesterday? Yes. Okay. Did you open that? I don't recall opening it. If I did, I don't recall doing it. How about the CDRS.XLSX file? Would that, and CDR, what does that stand for? Call detail records. Did you open that? I don't remember if I did not. Did you open it yesterday? 
I don't remember. I was looking for it. Like, once I found them, I was trying to figure out how they came into my present uh, or my, in my possession. That's what I started to focus on. Okay. How about the export.kmz file? When did you find that file? I found that one yesterday. Do you know when that came into your possession? Some time ago. Did you open that? I believe I did on my laptop. And what did that show you? Uh, it showed me different locations and so forth on and on. Those three files that we just talked about, along with the CASVIS 48 and the CASVIS full, are those copied so that I can have those now? Yes. And you referred to emails. How many emails did you find when you were preparing for this hearing? I believe there was five. Are those included for me to have now as well? Yes. Thank you. In the report that I received today, there was a reference to a drawings.json file. What's that? It was a JSON file that was inside the past this session. What does that depict? It's just data that a past is would use, I'm guessing, to replot something uh, on the map to actually show the locations or other things. Did you do anything with that file when you found it yesterday? I did open that file, yes. Okay. What did that show you when you opened it? There were references to two locations inside. When you open it, what it, does it just say here's two references, or what does it show you when you open it? It's different code, but there is some plain language or plain English, plain text inside of that code that show two addresses. Did you use that file? Well, let me ask this first. That file that contains code, do you use that with the CAST biz program? I attempted to load the session file as it in its entirety and it received errors. So I was not able to. That's why I went into the JSON file to see if there was any type of steam record. Is that file usable? I'm sure it is to someone. What is the restriction for you? I don't know what restriction is. I don't know what to do with that file outside of. <laughs> I got old. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I got old. <laughs> what kind of question was that? <laughs> what kind of answer was that? I tried to pull it in as a combined session log, which is what I was trained to do. I didn't get that. I didn't pull that file. Is that file available on a discovery drive for me? I did the prosecutor today. Thank you. In the report that I just got today, there's a reference to another cast biz session and some screenshots. What is that about? I believe you're talking about just the regular 48 hours folder. I don't know. I'm I'm curious. So that I I provided two folders. One was cast is, and one else was my last name of Maori. That was to differentiate the files that I found that were provided to me, and the folder of the files that I used to create this report. Okay. Cast is is the files that you found while preparing. Correct. And the one that says Maori is what you use to create your May 3rd report of 2023. Yes. Okay. I think I understand that now. In that file, you, I think your report said you found screenshots dated April 19th of 2023. Yes. All right. Does that mean that's the day that you put things into your CastViz program? Pause first. I got a quick question. Okay. What is this cast whiz program? I don't understand it. So from what I understand is it basically takes all the provider's data and uh, takes it as a snapshot and it's got locations on it. Okay. It's got uh, how the cell phone interacted with what tower oh, for what so time, that like kind of Like when stuff. they extract it, like Cellbrite does it. Yes. Okay. And that's sure. as far as I'm I'm gathering from what okay. I've read up on before 
we're watching this. Right. Like I said, I've been since this morning been going down this line since I saw it on ABC News that they were going to do this. So, okay. That was the day that I made the screenshots themselves. Okay. Where are those screenshots now? Are those also included on the drive? Yes. Okay. And then your report dated 5 3 says that you were asked to examine the record. So I'm a little confused if you had something that you took screenshots of on 419, but on 53 you were asked to examine the record. What what were you doing on 419 or before to get those screenshots? So I was tasked the date was May 3rd for the report. It's not the date that I asked to Okay. What day were you asked to do? I don't remember. I'm going to guess that it was somewhere around April 19th. That's when the screenshots were created. Okay. Let's talk about that time frame then and what you did. Uh, did you actually use a cast biz program at that time to create something? Yes. The cast biz program that you use at that time, and we're talking about springtime of 2023, we'll call it April for now, if that's fair. What training had you received by then to do this cast biz program? The 2019 training. Okay. What, with the cast biz program, what's the first thing that you did? Once the program is open, you can drag and drop the CDR records into the program. CDR means call detail records? Right. Did you do just 48-hour records, or did you do full records in April of 2023? I only did 48-hour records. Hmm. When you put the records in, um, those are the call detail records, and those relate to what? To the phone that the records were coming back to. I didn't understand what he it's said. The number you right. associated with Brent Coburger. Right. Okay. They misspelled it. When, name. after you put those call detail records in, do you have to do anything with cell towers? With the AT&T, no, because the cell tower locations are in the AT&T CDR. Hmm. Okay. So you put that record in, the tower locations are already part of the call detail record that you put in? Yes. Is that something that you have electronic on your computer and then you open your cast fish program and just import it into the program? Yes, AT&T provides both PDF and text documents of the file. And I use the text document to put into cast is to have it adjusted. And when you do that, what gets exported? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> At that point, nothing is exported or created. I didn't that I know of. Can you export the session that you're working on? You can export the session log, yes. Did you do that? No. How did you create screenshots? By using the built in Windows SNP tool, <laughs> as well as the built in Windows game console. I believe they call it the game bar. <laughs> Hold on. He <laughs> just was like. Uh, a screenshot, really? Do I have to explain that in this age of technology? Okay. I mean, he's right. Snipping I know is the best way of snipping. doing it, unless you do a screen grab. I I guess they're just trying to get his establish him. You know, I'm pretty much as a as a SME or double check yeah. his work, but they're just talking about a phone, a basic phone extraction. Well, he can't be there for the initial trial, mm. so that's why they're talking oh, so about that's now. Why he's Okay. Yes. Uh, it's just accessed by hitting Windows G that allows you to record your screen. What? <laughs> Windows. The only two things hold up. Pause it. So Windows, Windows G. Yeah. So Windows G brings up the game bar for Xbox. Oh, okay. So if you hit Windows G on your own computer, it mm -hmm. will bring up a game bar. I should say like Xbox chat. And then he took a picture. Somehow he took it. The snippet I'm so from tempted here. to do it right now. You guys, I just did it. Okay. I <laughs> that's why I was talking to you because I use that to talk to my friends when I even when I'm playing games. Wait a minute, I thought or I was family. your only friend. No, okay, fuck. is screen clip and <laughs> screen record. Yes, 
I said, how many times did you use call detail records in the CAST biz program? Probably a dozen times. I'm not entirely sure. Um, <laughs> what was that, Judge? How many times did you use a <laughs> Did you? Hold on. Hold on. She goes back. That was a terrible question. Hold on. Hold on. Let's watch the judge, too. Times? I'm not entirely sure. Um, that was a terrible question. How many times I think he was trying to pop his neck. This program in relation to Brian Koberger's call detail records? I don't know. No. More than once? I recall doing it for the grand jury because I wasn't grand jury main meat in the call detail records investigation. Yeah, in order to indict. Mm -hmm. I don't understand what that means. You're an attorney, you should. I wasn't the main person looking at those call detail records. <laughs> you weren't the main person with the call detail records, but you put them in the CASPIS program anyway? For the grand jury, I was requested. Okay. Mm. What did you rely on in producing those? Producing whatever you produced for the grand jury? Rely on what, what, do you, what did I produce? As far as the at and records? I want to know what you relied on to do that, to produce something for the grand jury. I don't understand the question. Okay. Um, There's a lot of confusion going on here. You weren't the main guy with the call detail records or with the CASVIS programming. Did I understand that much right? There was another investigator that was doing that. Okay. Who was? Did you end up involved in it somehow in April of 2023. Is that right? That's why I was asked to examine the data to provide that for the grand jury. Okay. Was that all of your instruction? Well, no. <laughs> no. What do you mean with that? Well, you're what, asked by somebody it? else who's actually doing this part of the investigation in the case to produce something for the grand jury to use. And I'm That's curious about what you relied on, what you, to, to get to that point. I want to know all the records you relied on, all of the emails, all of the conversations you relied on to produce this thing that you're not the expert for. So I wrote the affidavit for the at and records, received the at and records. Those records were also given to another investigator who was the main investigator doing the CDR records. Hmm. Prosecution then asked me to provide or create uh, the phone extraction uh, the visualization of the call detail records and examine the call detail records for the four hours in question. So this is no different than what they did with the Murdoch trial, what they're mm -hmm. doing in the really Karen sure, Reed trial. When you talked about writing the two warrants for at and we're talking about two warrants that relate to Brian Koberger. There were a lot of other warrants. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yes. I just want to be really clear on that. Um, you've taken the cast training. Is that right? Yes. And you know there's a way to save your session. Is that correct? Yes. And there's also a way just to hit reset and delete your session. Do you yes. know that part too? Mm -hmm. And back in April, when you were creating something for the grand jury, you hit reset. Is that right? Or I just deleted the file out of it. I don't remember if I hit reset or delete. You can delete them individually as well. You don't remember which thing you did? I do. But you decided to delete what you'd create. I don't know. I didn't delete the I didn't create the session log, so I don't know how I would just leave it. You just leave the reference of the file in the software, but the file itself is not good. You're muted, Mel. I want to make sure I understand. You. What do you have for us? You, you were going. The record still exists. You didn't delete that. I have a question. Right. But Positive the session, when you put that in Hold the on. cast biz program and it does its thing with the call detail records, which includes tower references, mm -hmm. you either deleted that 
session or you chose to reset. Did I understand that right? Didn't create a session log. I don't know how I would delete it. I just removed the reference to the file, the main file from the software at some point. I don't know when I did that. She's basically trying to ask him, how does this program work? What did you do to make this program work? And he keeps trying to tell her, I didn't delete the product itself. You just, when you input something, you take out that reference at the end, the data reference at the end. But my question is, um, I know that Koberger was using a public defender. Is she the public defender? I don't know if she is because she seems she's to pretty be dang on. I know she's like, if so, you, good you job. Because like, yeah. normally, know. like that's a good question. Uh, she's uh, she's not like. Oh, no. was it just a public defender during the grand jury? I don't know, but I, I, well, I would. That she's doesn't not, make sense either because he wouldn't be a part of the grand jury. The indictment. No, uh, defense does isn't there for a grand jury. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So. So yeah, well she's she's on it. Good job there, because normally everybody knows a, a PD will say, "Let's just take a plea deal." <laughs> now, <laughs> what, the way yeah. I look at it is, what he did was who is he coming down like uh, the, the, Mallory, the Mallory detective, the detective Mallory. Detective. Yeah. So okay. um, how we built our PDF forms in yeah. the army. And you know mm -hmm. how you would add stuff to you take references and you put it in there like a picture or something. You may delete a picture. Mm -hmm. I think he did something and he might have done something wrong and couldn't backtrack. So he had to close out and and that's the <laughs> where she's saying, did you hit reset? And that might have been what it is. But he's like, he's like, no, I might have deleted did. something. And then she started beating him down with, well, what did you delete? Well He's he, well, and he just explained you yeah, don't delete just, the the log, just just a reference. That's it. The program runs itself. I don't think she's picking picking up what he's dropping, but we shall resume. All right. You don't know when you did that. No, would, you can close the software without hitting reset or delete, and then it would just hey, stay just there. what I just mm -hmm. said. And you can also export your session if you get interrupted and you want to come back and work on it, right? Yes. Okay. Did you do that? You left it up and running at some point and then did something that didn't save it. Is that right? I, the session log was never created. Mm. Did not create a session log. So if you've watched the internship, do you, or do you remember at the very one of the final phases they had to do that help desk um, for Google. And th th he kept reminding them, remember, you got to hit record or you hit start and then you got to hit end. Yeah. It sounds like that's what he forgot to do was hit the start. Kind of like, like hit record and mm -hmm. actually, yeah. Yeah. The CDR records I was dealing with was relatively small. There's no need to do that because I can ingest the files. Right back in the casket is in a short amount of time. Hmm. That makes sense. Um, He's dealing with just one phone. Your Honor, just for clarity, may I approach? I have another exhibit yes. to show him. Whoa. Not the shoes I was expecting, public defender lady. Not heels. Thank no. you. She might be comfortable in shoes. Hey, I'm I'm all for it. I'd be comfortable with flip flops. And they're probably no. designer shoes too, you know, like yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not saying anything. I was just expecting she's looking really dapper, Dan. I thought she it would looks be like, kind of tall. Kinda. She looks like a giant. But then again, that's just because I'm short. I'd barely clear like this area. You just see, like this would be my head. A normal desk is what <laughs> two and a half, three foot. And it looks like you stack two of them and still see the top of her head. So. That's how we can tell you're Southern, Tommy, is because you say two and a half, three Are foot. Are you familiar with the doc? Instead oh, of two uh, and a half, three feet. Okay. We will resume. Document that was handed to you that's marked defendants W. <laughs> you're going to get a lot of comments back on that one. <laughs> have you seen that before? Is that something that uh, you were taught from? The cast user's guide? Uh, I, I'm sure I was. It's also included in the software that would be readily accessible. Okay. 
And Your Honor, we move for admission of defendants W. Thank you. No objection. Okay. That, that o, P, and W. Thank you. Okay. They're just out of order. In your training, were you also taught from the cast field user's guide? <laughs> I believe so. I'm, I'm about ready to switch gears on you and talk a little bit more about videos for a second, but if I can have just one moment, Your Honor. Sure. Okay, well, let's switch gears for just a minute. Um, you, during the course of your work, did you make contact with the Idaho Department of Transportation uh, to talk about some of the cameras that cover main roads coming into and out of Moscow? Yes. And did you attempt to make preservation of any items? Yes. What items did you want preserved? I was trying to see if they had saved video or still images from those points. What did you learn? That they do not retain those. Did you, when you say they do not retain those, do you mean they don't retain videos or pictures or both? Both. Did you do a preservation for anything? He's not the lead investigator. Not recall studying actually the preservation letter out. Okay. Um, your Honor, if I can have another exhibit provided. Yes. And these closed captioning peeps, y'all got to get on it. I Sorry. told you earlier, it said something about pizza dough. <laughs> 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 and I don't know who Runner is, but Runner, you bet we running. Don't I know. Running. I know. I feel bad for people who are hearing impaired. And they have to go by the closed captions because they're like, who's Runner and why is he eating a pizza <laughs> at this point? And what an unfortunate name, Judge John Judge. Judge Judged. I would just call myself Judge Squared. Judge Judge. His last <laughs> name is Judge, so his name is Judge John Judge. Roger Roger. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. He's looking, he's looking, the judge is looking at him looking, everybody, that's no pressure to have everybody stare at you look, because then you feel rushed. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't look rushed, he looks like he's just looking over things like, yep, I've seen this before, I know what this is, I, mean, I don't know what this is, what is this, let me read this, see? If he, if he has commendations from the FBI, he's been used in several trials, this is pretty standard procedure, I don't know why they're... Just just move your motion for them to produce evidence. I do know? wonder, like, in order to be cast like that, qualify. What just happened there? Is there Say a certification? Again. Say that again. Okay. Cast, what, what he went through, nice. that training. Pause it, please. Um, I thought it was pause. <laughs> was it yeah, no, we were way? waiting. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, So with him going through cast training, and mm -hmm. learning everything like this. Is there a research every two years? Because he said he took it back in 2019 and then again in 2023. So I guess it's longer than it's like four years. Um, I am looking at it. Or did he just take it again just to take it again and get a refresher? Probably every two years. Or something like that. I'm not. I don't know anything. I mean, All I know is that it there is. I just looked it up just now. There's a significant training program for our credentials and stuff like that. So yeah, because um, the first certificate said 2019 and graduated, and then the second one says 2023. Okay, so it's probably like a research because whenever you know software is changing. Yeah. Technology is changing. So let's resume. These are the emails that I was trying to. Find some kind of contact information for windy.com, a website that does weather related information as well as has some links to images from cameras that are covering the highway. And did you learn that you could have some still shots preserved? Um, I did. Did you have some still shots preserved? I did not. Your Honor would move for admission. I feel like he moved his mic again. Yeah. Okay. Yes. What, I'm sorry, PP? 
Double P, yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Is it? Is it PP? Uh, is it Evidence P double P. Admitted? Uh, no. <laughs> is it PP? <laughs> That's what is he it said. PP? I have a child. <laughs> We're so immature. When we started talking, we talked about you kind of being the guy that would book or take videos in from different agencies, even if you didn't verify what was on the device you received. Is that right? Yes. Maybe. And do you, I, I have a specific one that I, a couple of them I want to ask you about. One is from. <laughs> a specific from, one, a couple of them. <laughs> do you recall receiving that video? Red Star Coffee Shop. Did you see that? <laughs> and <laughs> it's trying to get us to buy stuff. Are you aware that it was hooked in or brought in by Idaho State Police? No. How would I find out about those videos? I don't know. I don't know. He <laughs> tries to find out what was given. I was just given the last USB drives. Uh, I was not given the, the, by the people that were bringing them in for time. Given to them after it had been handed off to other investigators and other assistants that were helping with the files. Is there somebody else I should ask about specific ones to really? track where they went? I don't know. <laughs> That's a good question. Is there okay. ones that I should ask? Um, mm -hmm. That's a good question. And he's like, I don't know. Yeah, but at the same time, why is she asking him about stuff that's Thank outside you, of his Mallory. name? I don't have oh. the other questions for now. Hold on, the prosecutor. Might. You remember? Oh, oh Santa's going to ask. Him. We don't stand up in your. Mallory, I'm going to go back to the topic that we were talking about. Can you explain to me generally what is Castvin? It's just a software that is useful in creating visualizations of the ball detail records. You okay. think they would have started so with that? How is it useful? What does it show? It shows the location and the direction of the cell towers and yep. the mm -hmm. Okay. Now, um, what version of Castvis do you have? Currently, I think I have 33 on my laptop. Uh, it's prompted me to update to 38. But at the time, I believe I had 30 installed. So walk me through. Um, you start up the software program. Yes. And then what do you do? Used it. Brought the text file from the CDRs into the system. It ingests the files and then produces a display of that data. Okay. And is that what you did on the 19th? Yes. Okay. And then what did you do with that visual that was displayed? With the visuals, I created screenshots, created the screen capture of the video. Casper also allows a timeline plane view that you can record separately in those built in software that can save those. Other than uploading the CDRs, um, did you change any of the settings on Castvis? The only thing that I would have done was gone in and changed the, uh, made sure that the time was correct because they were coming in at UTC, it was a coordinated time. I wanted to make sure that those were representative of the whole time. All right, so you just changed it to Pacific? Correct. Any other changes? No. So you were talking about how it does not automatically save. It does not. Okay. And you chose not to save. No. And in the incident that was provided, the actual text says that if you need to save a session file. Mm. Okay. And can you tell me why didn't you save these settings? Because he didn't I need to. I was creating <laughs> the visualization exhibits. That's why I was. Doing with that. Any reason to save the settings? No. Could this be recreated or, or redone in the same fashion? Yes, I can. 
again, open the software, drag the CDRs back in, and in a very short time it is generated. And it would give you the same information? Yes. Is that why you didn't save it? Yes. Save it, not David. <laughs> I want to switch over to the other uh, session files that you found. Um, were those session files created by you? No. Okay. And did you ever use those? No. And have you now uh, turned those over, provided those? Yes. Now I want to switch gears over to uh, what we were discussing as windy.com. Uh, what is that? What is windy? It's a website that is uh, available for leather and such. He okay. said that earlier. And why is that relevant in this case? We were directed by uh, employees Cap Corporal Payne that told me that we should look into windy.com. And why is that? Just to see if the, they retained video from the cameras themselves. Okay, so windy.com has cameras? They have screenshots. They basically capture the ITD cameras and put them on their website. Those okay. images are routinely purged from their site. So for the big brother. Thank you, big brother. Okay. And, and can you explain? To you're me, welcome. When are those, <laughs> um, you talked about them being purged from their site? What's that schedule? From going on their website yesterday, it's a public website, so they will go back to it. I don't remember exactly. Uh, I believe that within 24 hours, it's hourly. Uh, within a week, it's uh, daily. Within 12 months, it's monthly. And then after that, it'll be sort of, I'm seeing probably like three months or so. Hmm. Okay. Uh, um, can you explain why you didn't preserve those images from Wendy.com? When it was discussed with other investigators, we would have only gotten, I believe it was like a one image per day. Time frame wasn't where we were interested in, so we didn't capture that one. So there is no, no evidentiary value? None that we didn't. And have you since gone back and found some screenshots? Yes. It's what's on a, available on the publicly available website. Anyone can go to windy.com and grab the screenshots there. And you've now done that? I have. So many people Any are going to windy.com right no. now. Have those been turned over anyway? Yes. I just have one second. Sure. I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Can you read the back? Yes, just a bit. You were just speaking with the prosecutor about the images from Wendy.com. And I thought you didn't preserve anything or go back and look at anything during your investigation. Did I misunderstand that? So yesterday when I was directed by the prosecutor. Okay, so yesterday the prosecutor said go look for these things. Yes. But before that you and other investigators decided not to. Did I get that right? With the information that we were given, we were told that there would be a screenshot for the day. But the right, the parameters of it. It's hard to understand them. Because he's not talking to the mic anymore. Didn't see that they would be relevant. Okay. But you didn't look back then. You waited until yesterday. Is that right? No, we looked back then. I couldn't tell you what time. Most of the photos that were taken for the daily screenshot or the daily uh, screenshots. The mic is basically uh, for daytime. Can you can still hear me, but I'm not being directly in the mic. Bet you the court reporter is so frustrated. Okay, but you did look at the time and made a decision at the time. Do I understand that now? Yes. Okay. Uh, back to the I understood that back then. <laughs> a couple of questions for you. When you were doing the work back in April of 2023, did you see maps on the screen with the work that you were doing? Yes. And um, you also made a video of that. I want to show you a map. Ooh, and what's that? See if it's what I think it is. I apologize, everybody. That's a motorcycle passing my house. Oh, okay.
<laughs> sounds like a fucking. You have to. Sounds like a gnat. In front of you. What is that? There's to be a screen capture of the cast is software. Is that a screen capture from a map that you made? Yes. All right. Your Honor would move for admission of defendants R. <laughs> admission R. Admit. And are you aware that when you can see mapping on your screen on this program that there's a log created? Okay. What? You would agree that Ooh. if I were Ooh. to take all detail records that have the tower report in them, I would have to have the same cast version you were using to recreate what you did. Would you agree with that? No. You could use other systems. If I took the regular cell all detail records and put them into a different version of cast. Are you saying that it would become different? Well, I don't know. That's a good question. Let me try to be more clear about the one I was asking. And then I like yours. We might talk about your question as well. Oh. My question is, um, the, the prosecutor suggested that your work be recreated. And so it didn't matter that you hadn't saved your session. Uh, what I want to know is if I have the 48 hour call detail records that contain the tower list like you have, do I have to have the cast this program that you used so I can see what you did? I don't know because I don't know what the back end of the cast is software does. I'm just an user, so I don't know. <laughs> That's a good answer. That's a very good answer. He didn't make the program. He just used it. You were it. in this CASPIS program, at least for a while, creating exhibits that would be relied on. Is that right? Yes. On more than one occasion. Is that right? Yes. But you didn't save your work. He doesn't have to. He's explained that like 12 Not times. Would you agree? I can't see what you did without your session log? Can't examine what you did without your session log? Is there to create the visualizations for the exhibits? That's what I just asked. Is. Good answer. But I can't see what you did. But Is that right? Okay, so here's the, I, I pause it for a second because I got an issue with this. I get where she's coming from. She wants to see the steps that he takes. However, that's, I mean, that's like having somebody request the steps you take in, in, I don't know, when you open an envelope, when you drive to this, you know, when you I think of it, more, I think of it more as like, show your work as in like your math, when you're doing math, yeah. but when you're what he's trying to get at, but what he did was he just inputted a file yeah, and it popped up, it populated what that file said, not to and he printed what that file said. Yeah, not and to mention. Um, normally, when SMEs provide reports, I haven't really heard what you know. I need to see how you did all of this as yeah. an exhibit. That's kind of, I don't know. Would you yeah. ask? A, would you ask a lab how they? I know processed everything. Like, well, they would. Ask, how do you process it? This and that, but they wouldn't ask. Well, I can't see your work. No, exactly. you just That's go by the medical like, examiner's report. You just go by the yeah. lab report. So I just think that's just, you know, okay. Here's the that that must be the I don't know. <laughs> Is that right? No. No. No, it's not right, or no, I can't see what you did. You cannot, but I could take those cell data or call data records, put them into assets again. The results would be what they are because we're still using the same records from at t to create Have you that's done that? what i i felt yeah like. these records yes no why would he he's using one cast system I think that's, that's it okay. thank you anything on that Ms. jennings no no miss jennings Just, no Um, can we go, uh, why did you pull the CDRs into Castus? Why did I do that? You asked him to. Because I was asked by you to do 
I'm telling you, dude, I was just laughing. I had to mute it because I thought it was going to be too loud in the mic. You asked me to. Follow up on that question? Nope. Thank you. Okay, great. Can this witness uh, be excused? Yes, please. Any objection? Okay, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm a firm believer. Don't ask a question that you aren't ready for the answer. Well, they or, always teach or in you law don't school. Know, you right, you don't know the answer. But you can say if you like. Go ahead. Uh, they teach in law school, don't ask a question that you don't already know the answer to. Okay. Next witness. Your Honor, the rest of the witnesses will be present and ready to go on the 30th, to the very best of my knowledge. This is right. the witness we need. Showtime to 30th. Today's hearing. So thank you for that. Okay. Thank you. So we're done for today? We're done for today, Your Honor. Wow. Okay, Ms. Jennings, agreed? Agreed. Okay. Okay, agreed, agreed, um, agreed. All right. Well, what you think, Tom? I, I mean, I get where they're coming from. They've got to establish, you know, because this is pretty damning information against Koberger. But honestly, cell phone extractions are just a normal part of investigations now. And that's not the only CAS system. They use it in almost every court trial that I've been watching lately is some sort of cast system to extrapolate directly from that cell phone the data because from that cell phone not only that is it shows you have to have the physical phone but it will show you know when a person moved if they opened it what they searched the time they did it what text blah 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 you know that stuff the blah 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 especially <laughs> All right. What you think, it Tommy? Was, it was interesting. I got it. She was trying to one get all the information she hadn't gotten yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, hell, forty-eight hours ago, none of this was available to him. Then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, he finds six or seven files, which is pretty cool, you know. But and I, I got it. Like, how did he build this and how did he do that? And I got all this. All right. Mm -hmm. But like some of the questions I felt was vague. And I told you that earlier. I would have asked him, well, who did you work beside? Because that would have solidified if I needed to bring another witness in. Unless they already know that because the witness list has been exchanged. So Yeah, but to get it on record, if he let's say that I'm like, hey, I got it from mel mm -hmm. right that would be but what happens if that wasn't the only person i got my information from let's say do you get what i'm saying like hey i, I worked with with such and such and such and such and mel right. mel was the the leader of the thing that would have been a clean because then especially as a defense i want to know everybody who you worked with well the fact that she didn't ask leads one and he's just responsible for that one thing because he said there was someone else yeah because his name it, was on it yeah but what i was i was getting at is that they have their witness list so they pretty much know where everything's coming from if that has his name on it then of course they're going to question him because he won't be available at the time but there's another hearing on the 30th so it's probably you know in in that probably that hearing what I'm a little confused about was I thought this hearing was supposed to be uh, regarding their motion for production of evidence. Maybe this is the evidence they were talking about, but it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I knew that they were bringing a witness in and that there mm -hmm. was uh, evidence not given to them from the prosecution side. Mm -hmm. And that's what was on this drive. Mm -hmm. So she was making sure that all the files are on the brought up to the prosecution 48 hours ago is mm -hmm. on this drive i get it okay so. so because he just turned something over but he won't be available at, he won't be there for the, the, 30th. the 30th or the 31st when they start kicking up what do you mean on the 31st i thought I the hearing wasn't until she just said the 30th oh. and then she also said in the beginning the 31st that he would not be available for the 30th and the 31st. I don't know. Maybe there's another motion coming. You know I'm what I'm saying? To, yeah, I'm trying to because look it Because there's up. not a court date that's set set. Right. Okay. At least not that. Uh, I okay. I see right here. So 
Um, I'm looking at it. The hearing was vacated. They're just what was supposed to happen today was vacated this hearing, but that's what's been rescheduled for the 30th. Mm. Um, that okay. way they can review the new information. And so what's going to happen on the 30th is it's going to determine. Oh, I see. So what they tried to do is Koberger does not want this to be a public hearing. No, he does not. And he wants it now closed to everybody. Yeah. So on the 30th, the it's saying right now, at this time, the hearing on the 30th will be sealed as stipulated by the parties. However, that could change if the parties determine that the hearing can be open to the public. I think... I, I think now, I didn't know like, that he was the one that's changing it to close. Am I too loud? I'm sorry. Yeah. That's um, okay. And I'm actually like a foot away from the mic. It's just how it picks me up. Anyways. um, I don't know if it's him. Does it say that it's him requesting to open or was it? Well, it was him. It close? No. He, he's moved several times. He's filed several motions to have the hearings and, and the trial sealed. And at one point, um, the judge was going to, but it's a public hearing. There's public in interest and things like that. So that part was um, overruled. So what it says here is that if the parties, um, Koberger's team does not want it to be open to the public. So they did make that stipulation, but the hearing is supposed to be open to the public. If during the hearing issues arise, that must be addressed in a sealed proceeding. The court will clear the courtroom and discontinue the live stream of the proceedings on the court's YouTube channel. And the hearing on the 30th is also going to include arguments for the defendant to unseal parts of IgG materials. What is, what is that? I don't know. Okay, let me look at... Uh, uh, I have no idea. I guess it's... I don't know. And I don't, I, I will figure I it know. out. I won't yeah. know until it gets closer. Yeah. Yeah. My thing is, is that he has tried, what's frustrating me. He has tried to delay this, this trial so much, so much. It's just like, let's just go, man. Let's just go. Let's just go. So we'll see. But that was that, folks. We're going to be coming back probably this weekend. Look for uh, another episode because we got to we got to recap this past week of of just a dumpster fire of a hearing in the Karen Reed trace in terms of the prosecution's continued witnesses, because just when you think it can't get worse. It does. <laughs> not for the defense either. This is just like <laughs> grasping at straws. This is like you guys are douches. So, we'll we'll see then. Yeah. Yeah, bunch of hearsay. Bunch of hearsay. Yeah, and a and a bunch of cross examination. All like of them. Yeah, like amnesia. <laughs> cross examination. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm I'm ready. I'm ready All to get right. this show rolling. So until then, please like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.